This is ST Fitz and I am back again. Y'all, today, this is going to be very quick. I just want to give you an update. If you have been watching me or following me, you know that I have been very transparent with you and, you know, straight up about everything that's going on in my life. Real quick, if you are my son or around my son, you got to quit watching this video right now. This video is not for you. Y'all, so I've been going to these daggum, they're called docket calls, um, for almost a year and a half now. It's basically, I'm going to court. Uh, as I've told you all, I am sitting here awaiting trial, I guess, or pending charges that are going on. Uh, motion for discovery to figure out, you know, what do y'all have on me, which I'm pretty sure is nothing because I can't imagine how there could be. Doesn't matter. Was filed last March. Marion County, Texas has not given me any discovery. It's been almost a year. I told my attorney I wanted to file and use my Sixth Amendment rights, which if you want to read about, you can read about in my book, The Police Are Not Your Friends, because I go over your Sixth Amendment rights as well as your Fourth and Fifth. He said, man, you can file um, for a speedy trial, but all this, you know, the coup or whatever y'all want to call it is going on, and I'm worried about my health, and if you want to do that, I cannot represent you. And I thought, dang, well, that ain't no fun. Anyways... So they keep having me go to these docking calls, which means I put on decent clothes, I go sit, and wait until the judge calls my name, and I stand up, admit that I'm present, and then normally the district attorney, so far, has said pass, meaning they're not setting a date for my trial. I've been sitting here for over a year and a half on these false accusations. And again, if you've been watching me, You've seen all this, you know all this, and if you have not been watching me or just, you know, starting to, and you have any questions about it, you can either go look at some of my previous content or, you know, ask me. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, like I said, be very transparent with everyone. So, man, I went again today, was passed on again today, and it's just... It's rough when you know like you have a very young child who is at very, very, very important stages of their development. They say, and I'm no professional, but from my research, I find the first three to three and a half years of a child's life is very important. They need to know that someone's going to be there for them. They need to know that, I mean, they need to feel loved. They need to feel supported. And if they don't have that, that could affect them far into adulthood. And I have to sit back and suck it up and watch my son not be properly taken care of. And there's honestly nothing I can do about it. I mean, I've done everything I can. I've filed all kinds of stuff if you only knew. And I keep getting told by the county. You know, and it's difficult, to say the least. However, it has been another journey, just like this journey of creating content for you here on YouTube. Um, it has been, uh, you know, work in a way. Yet at the same time, I've met some wonderful people here. Uh, just making these little videos. And, man, I appreciate every one of you. And if you want to take a second, why don't you like this video? Maybe you leave me a comment. Maybe you subscribe. Maybe you dislike this video. Do what you want. I ain't going to sit here and tell you what to do. You know, it's supposed to be a daggum free country. I mean, it ain't. And if anyone tells you it is, they're lying to you. But at the same time, this is still a free exchange. You're welcome to hit that dislike button. It ain't going to get my butt hurt. Man... Um, where the heck was I going with this? I guess the point being, if for some reason you immediately see me stop making, you know, putting up content, making these videos, that means that a jury of what they're going to call my peers has found me guilty of crimes I did not commit. And 
those crimes come with the penalty of a five-year mandatory minimum sentence. And again, if you had read my book, uh, The Police Are Not Your Friends, you will also know that here in America, we have what's known as a trial penalty. Meaning, if you actually want to take this to trial and go through all that hassle and, you know, cause everybody to spend all this additional time to see if you can actually get your justice or not, they're going to give you, most likely, the harshest sentence there is. Mine coming with a five-year mandatory minimum. Mandatory meaning the legislature says that, or legislature says that is the minimum time that you will have to spend in prison. And with the trial penalty, considering I'm definitely going to sit there and force, I guess I'm not going to force them, but allow a jury of my peers of 12 people to look me in the face and tell me I did something I didn't do to send me to jail. Yeah, that means I'm probably in the sentencing, sentencing stage going to get a harsher penalty than the mandatory minimum. So, point being, if I quit creating this content, I am locked up. I'll try to get out to my mom or a friend or somebody let y'all know my inmate number. And, uh... If you want to send me some commissary, that'd probably be pretty cool because I hear honey buns ain't free in prison. <laughs> oh, man. You got to keep making the jokes. How else are you going to make it through this life? It has been a rough road. I hope none of you guys have to deal with the... Not, not just the rough road that I've been going down, but more importantly, my poor son... And the rough road he's been going down. He's only two and he's already in a deficit, if you understand what I'm saying. However, there will never be a day where my son can look at me and say, Daddy, why didn't you try? Well, I mean, he could say it, but I'd be able to be like, Well, look, I did and I did and I did and I did and I tried and I tried and I tried. So, I've seen so many people grow up, uh, especially people who were victims from one of their other parents of like parental alienation. And, you know, they still carry these issues with them into adulthood. And I've known some of them that were upset with their other parent because that parent did not, in their perspective, at least try and do something my son's not going to be able to say that i mean again he can say that but he would be misinformed because son your daddy is trying your daddy's doing everything he can and i am so 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 sorry for the predicament you're in anyway i just wanted to give you all a little update um if i do create a quick career Quit creating content, it will probably be within the next uh, six months to a year, year and a half. And if I keep making content, that means we actually did have some justice in this world. However, as you know, I meet with Women Against False Accusations weekly. And a lot of people, such as Mr. Ronis Dural, Ronis, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, sir who spent eight years in prison to be exonerated. I made, uh, through the Innocence Project, I made a video on his story. It turned out, like, I'm going to try to give you the quick of it. He was accused of molesting a 14-year-old girl who became pregnant. This girl went to her mother. Her mother wanted to know who got you pregnant. She said her stepfather. Then she said a few more names. And finally, Mr. Jarrell's name came up. And Mr. Dural was a naval, uh, I'm not sure if he was an officer, I think he was an officer. Anyway, he was serving in our naval forces. He was promptly arrested and taken to jail on this accusation because uh, the mother of this girl had uh, previously dated him. And that was the one name that this 14 year old girl said that she was like, we're going to go with that one, you know, the mother came up years later that the uh, the cafeteria worker, a, a cafeteria worker at this girl's school had been sleeping with her 
as well as her stepdad. And one of those men were the actual father of this child. Mr. Jarrell had never done anything inappropriate with this child. And at the same time, he was dishonorably discharged from the Navy, spent eight years in prison and another eight years working to clear his name. And it was just last week that the Navy actually overturned his dishonorable discharge and gave him an honorable discharge. And I would like to take a moment right now and not thank, but be grateful for Mr. Doral's Pyrrhic victory in that circumstance. And I'm sure you all know what a Pyrrhic victory is, but that is a victory that comes with great loss. So my heart goes out to that man. He is an upstanding citizen and we should all strive to be more like him to be honest from what I've met of him so I just wanted to get this one out there I wanted to put it in your heads I hadn't put out anything in a little bit and uh, I've been going through a lot lately and most of it is dealing with having to watch my son um, not be taken care of the way that I would take care of him which is you know, like any decent parent would. You know, I love each and every one of you. Please send over a prayer. It's T. Fitz, and I'm out.